Because that would have been a, a really nice transition of the body sinking and then her swimming off with the sharks and whatnot. But they, they, it's kind of a clunky transition, I think, with this, with having uh, uh, Trent Slater. <laughs> Rob yeah. Mays as Trent Slater. Uh, that's a, that's well, a solid I, I 90s the problem action. Is, I think the problem is they had a great idea, but they didn't believe in themselves. Yeah. Right? So, so they just kind of stuck with it. They needed a multicolor background and, like, silhouettes of sharks, like, I don't know, taking oh. their fins off or, like, showing their teeth. Uh, just something like really sensual, but with this level of danger and frantic and uh, borderline horror and terror in this opening segment, you don't want to sexualize the sharks too soon. You want to keep the terror and you want to keep the fear going into the film. Like having known A, I didn't know this film existed. B, <laughs> I have yet to see the rest of this film. Based off this opening scene alone, I'm genuinely interested in seeing the rest of this movie. I don't care how it plays out. Like I, I'm in it. Especially when we get towards the end of the scene, and all of a sudden the guy, you know, what's he doing? He's not opening a garage door. He's turning the sharks around. So we've got a control element here. I'm intensely interested. Yeah, a little clicker. Yeah. Yeah. And then they follow it. it, it yeah. It'd be great if they used that throughout the film. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> try not to spoil it for you, Nick. And also, <laughs> I, I do I do got to say, one of the best visuals in this, and I tried to research everything I could about this, but there is a scene where Misty Calhoun grabs onto a shark's fin and catches a ride. And it's a pretty great visual yeah. in regards to just danger and, like, that's the actress doing that. And... It's, I don't know, it's it's her swimming around with sharks. I, mean, I guess it, oh, wait, wait, did you write down the lyrics of the song? I did. I okay. couldn't find them online, okay. so I went through and transcribed them. Uh, yeah, uh, give us your best reading. Well, well, before I do, did anyone else get huge Power of Love by Frankie Goes to Hollywood vibes from this song? It's, Power of Love? Yeah. Not 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 Huey Lewis in the News, the Frankie Goes to Hollywood version. Uh, not version, but See, yeah. all Different I hear song. is the Huey Lewis in the News. I don't hear the Frankie oh. going to Hollywood. I just hear <laughs> Newfound Glory's cover of it. Oh, the, the power of love. It's, it's the same tune. It's the same instrumental behind it. I get. I am certain. Like Sean Murray is the guy who created this song. He also did the the score for the whole film. But yeah, the all I could hear going through this was this would be if Frankie Goes to Hollywood did a a Bond theme. Anyway, the lyrics are to the. Uh, Listing into nowhere, wading in the dark, in the blue. No, wait, wait, you gotta read, you gotta do it better. You gotta do it uh, like the song. Uh, oh, come on, man. I'm, okay, I'm not or at singing. Least read it, it dramatically. Yeah, it is a ways. <sighs> but it's it's still non sequitur. <laughs> you gotta do it. Come on. Listing Central. into nowhere, Ooh. wading in the dark, in the blue, trading dreams for nightmares, the undertow of gloom, in the blue. Drowning in the deep blue sea. Dragged into the riptide. Fall into the light. Coming through. Trading dreams for nightmares. The undertow of gloom. In the blue. Drowning in the deep blue sea. Fancy. I mean, <laughs> that was beautiful. That was absolutely... Oh, oh man. We just, we just won our potty award. <laughs> There we go. That's you know what? I don't even think you guys need to do the rest of the film. <laughs> oh, Let's end God. it on a high note. Oh, and get that was out so of here. good. That was so good. Oh, thank you. The undertow of gloom, <laughs> trading dreams for nightmares. And again, not all the lyrics are that easy to discern. So I, I may, I may have missed a word here or there. I've been a word off, but I, I couldn't find the lyrics online, so I did what I could. Well, yeah. This, this, is, it's certainly no deepest blue as perhaps like a shark spin. Although when I watched this with my wife. She after during this bit, she said the music to this film is better than the music to the first film because she hates Deepest Blue. <laughs> right, strong words, uh, harsh words, sure. incorrect words. I want to spell out. So he goes in the blue. Yes. He, he does it for about forty-seven <laughs> seconds. Yeah. So this is how blue would be spelled if this song was like <laughs> you know it, it would be it, <laughs> it would be b b b l l l l. U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U E E E, which I think is is how we should refer to the title of this film, for now. Deep blue sea. 
because he, he longer has the C as well. <laughs> but I, I gotta tell you, this underwater by the frogmen, they they called the frogmen the, the the camera crew on this. It looks like there's some good footage of sharks here, and they are in South Africa, so that does give them a nice uh, benefit of shooting there. I mean, there are, there's a lot of sharks around that area, but yeah, I think I, I it's quite that scene where she grabs onto the shark looks pretty cool, and that's a uh, that's dangerous. That's really like that's you you see like there's no it's hard to come back from that in an opening credit where someone just rides a shark like this isn't Patrick Wilson on a shark in Aquaman that's clearly CGI and prehistoric this is Misty Calhoun riding a shark or catching yeah. a ride on a shark yeah and I I, I mean, we'll get into it next week but I love that this is her opening uh, like a lecture like this is this footage she's showing to a class of students and it starts off with camera in the water she dives down and swims breasts first to the camera and this is what she's presenting to her class now like, kind of my professors in college right they film stuff i mean my teachers never showed me like those kind of shots but i i got my degree in media and communication studies and i did video as well and so i had to watch all their stuff so i'm familiar with that i've just never seen a scuba diving thing with a very low top <laughs> yeah on which, uh, that's not something I've never seen, but that's something teachers do too. Nick, you haven't seen the rest of this, but that's it's a long tradition of her not being able to do her top all the way up uh, for mm. e- everything she wears. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Maybe it's a safety thing. Like, what okay. if something happens? And her, listen, hear me out. What if something yeah. happens? Her shirt gets caught on something, right? And all of a sudden, she's got to rip it off before she gets a torn into a machine and ripped to bits. B, she can't undo the seatbelt strap in her car, and it's drowning in a ravine, so she's got to rip the shirt off to get out. There are so many scenarios where you got a quick release on a shirt, and she's there. She is, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, 80% there, having not seen the rest of the film. You've never read the zombie survival guide, Jay. I have, actually. Oh, well, they say no mullets. (laughs) No mullets. Yeah, no mullets, no loose clothing. So, I mean, she gets it. And this is a zombie scenario. Okay, so we're going with it's, it's safety cleavage. Fine. <laughs> I mean, it's gratuitous. It's yes. incredibly gratuitous. I mean, it, it's not the most gratuitous uh, shot we'll see in the film. Uh, certainly, that comes up in a week after next. But yeah, it's gratuitous. Good. Yeah, I'm glad people agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to spin it to where I mean, you can't really spin it. This no. is it's gratuity at its finest. But <laughs> if a zombies do attack. I mean, she's golden. <laughs> when? Much. When they attack. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, it's what do you guys... So in this opening scene, too, I mean, it's very... The cinematography is very meat and potatoes, I would say. You just they Also, they shot in a tank. They uh, Going in the open water is so expensive, so they shot this scene in a tank, added some CGI later. That's but well done. I, I do think that Thomas Calloway, the cinematographer, he was uh, the camera operator on Friday 13th Part 7, The New Blood, he worked on Ghoul- Ghoulies Go to College, Speech Babes from Beyond, Blood Ra- Blood Razor, uh, Blood Wait Hellraiser Bloodline. Uh, then he moved up through. Let's see what other movies has he done. This guy's done some pretty cool. He did Critters Three. He was a director of photography. He worked on a bunch of Christmas movies, so he mer- moved into those, which is Blood Dolls. Never even heard of that. Earth vs. the Spider. What's that? But then he Cruel Intentions Three. So, I mean, this guy, Feast. Remember that movie, Feast? Oh, Feast that was, is great. Yeah, he shot Feast. Awesome. And then he also has done, uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you have them, you probably have those out there, Jay, but the Christmas movies on Hallmark, they're huge out here now. I mean, they I, are I'm huge. aware of them, but I have, I've never seen them. Yeah. Uh, they're an absolute <laughs> industry, but they shoot in somewhere between 10 to 14 days. So I think you hire this guy, uh, you, if you have a low-budget horror film or you need a quick christmas movie shot hire him because the cinematographer just knows how to like get the shots and so i think that it's for the budget they had in the time it's pretty good what this guy i mean it's just quick and meat and potatoes cinematography did you guys think anything about the cinematography in this clip in the opening 10 minutes i think it adds I think it just keeps in the moment of we're in danger. We need to be on our toes, even though they're not on their toes and they're not taking advantage of what's going on. I will say this. Uh, 
I feel like the cinematographer they're bringing in here is uh, pretty much the wolf from Pulp Fiction. He gets in, he gets the job done. <laughs> yes. And then yes. we're on to the next. You know what I mean? And people that's are beautiful. just like, wow. Oh, that's that's incredible. They're, the crew's still sitting there when he's done shooting. Like, did you finish already? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. What are you like, still what? acting for? Oh, I'm okay. done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we shot a movie in two days? Got it done. Hey, I mean, take I off. finished three. He shot nothing. <laughs> uh, I, I, meant, I forgot to mention uh, Sean Murray, the composer. He, some of his other work. He did a film called Rodeo and Juliet, uh, which Ooh. was my favorite title. Scoring I down. need to see this. Right. But he also, yeah, Mark, I... he, he was a composer for Accident Man with Scott Atkins. Yes. So, yeah. He's worked with My home boy, Scott Atkins. Greatest man on the planet. But yeah, Ro- Rodeo and Juliet is uh, exactly what you think it is. They filmed it in New Orleans. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, did you ever eat at Koshan when you were living in New Orleans? I did not because I was very poor. <laughs> oh. Whenever I worked there, I would always go to Koshan and eat. That place is delicious. Sorry to bring that up, Nick. <laughs> no, you're fine. I it's I loved it regardless. He also composed yeah. for Mega Church Murder. Oh, uh, and also the cinematographer worked on that too. Oh, with Michael Beach. Yeah. From this, from this film. Together. Birds of a yeah. feather. Maybe I need Thomas to watch Mega Gallery Church Murder. That. That's great. And also, I don't know if you know this, but Trent Slater. What's better, Slater Trent or Trent Slater? Uh, Trent Slater. I like Trent yeah. Slater. Slater Trent sounds like you're at a private school, and I I shouldn't like you. Wow. So just oh, what does Trent Slater sound like? It just sounds cool. Sounds Who's like that? He's, he's oh, you mean shocked. Trent Slater? Swoon? Yeah. It's, well, it's, hey, can you say that same exact way, but just flipped? I just want to hear it. I I, I want to absorb this. Oh, you mean Slater Trent? Swoon? Uh, it's, it's, like, it's Slater Trent gag. I think. Trent Slater. <laughs> Man, you saw. Uh, I didn't even yeah. think about that. And think you of it like it. this. Think of it like this sentence too. Hey, who's the new kid? Oh, you mean the one that transferred over from Cool Cool Kid High School? Trent Slater. <gasps> Trent Slater. Oh, my legs quivering already. <laughs> the hair standing up on the back of my neck. There you go. <laughs> Can you say Slater Trent in that same sentence? Hey, who's the new kid? You mean the transfer from over at Cool Kid High School? Slater Trent? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not fair because of the way I said his name. Yeah. Slater uh, Trent. <laughs> uh, that's how you say it. Like, that's a natural way it's coming out. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. If this was an Aquabat song about pool parties. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you would want to say Trent Slater. <laughs> Trader, wait, Trent Slater? Yeah! You would never <laughs> hear pool Slater, party Trent. Thrown by Trader Slant. Yeah. <laughs> pool party, baby. Trent Slater's there. Yeah, that works. Not Slater, Trent. Oh, man. Not Everyone wants to Slater, Trent, good. Am I having a stroke over here? <laughs> <laughs> Not thrown by Slater, Trent. Cool pool party. La, 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 la. la, la. <laughs> Hot dog it's the only fun. song by them I know, so don't oh, play it. Pizza Day? <laughs> you know, Fashion Pizza Day? Zombie is a good song, too, by them as well. I like Fashion Zombies. That's a good uh, Aquabat song. But that's really interesting. That's, man. And he, you know, Rob Mays acts in a lot of Christmas films. He got in on them early, and he got in on them before they were really popular. So now he's set. So he's like a Candace Cameron Bure, who was with them when they weren't cool. But now they're an absolute industry, and she's just a legend now again. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's doing work. Rob Mays is in on those Hallmark Christmas movies. Shoot two weeks a year, make some bank, go to Utah. He's, uh, he's an Asgardian in uh, Thor Ragnarok as well. Oh. oh. I like that. I should watch that again. I don't, I, good... well, I don't think he's Asgardian Man is his credit. So I don't know if he has a speaking line. He, but he looks the part. He looks kind of uh, Hemsworthy. Asgardian. Mm-hmm. The one thing about... Trent Slater, as opposed to Carter Blake. Trent seems a little angrier in the opening scene than Carter. So when Carter shoots the shark in the first, when when we first meet Carter, he's real chill. But when Trent's making his announcements and shooting flares in the air, well, there's smoke, there's fire. He seems a little surly. How do y'all feel about that? Yeah, I I I have the benefit of seeing the rest of the film, uh, so I would. <laughs> benefit uh i i I, 
would say that fits with... Let's enjoy this, Jay. Let's enjoy I'm it. I'm really trying, Mark. <laughs> Listeners, I'm going to be 